What's going on guys? In this video we're going to be continuing our New England Patriots offensive free guide on the doubles wide flex. This uh, formation is absolutely lethal. If you want to get better at Madden, I think this is one of the best formations to start with. It gives you a ton of concepts that you can apply to really anything that you're doing. And in this video we're going to be talking about a cover three glitch um, that is is really, really effective. This is paired with a nice little concept that you can work if you if they do adjust to this or they man coverage or they do some things. There's answers to everything with this play. Uh, this is one of the plays that I'll go to though if my opponent is running a lot of cover three Mabel. This is very specifically designed to absolutely torch it. So we're gonna get into the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'd encourage you to do so. My channel is focusing on helping people become the best Madden players that they can become. So if you want to get better at this game, I would encourage you to hit that subscribe button. Now the play we're going to be going over is the X Dagger. And there's we're going to give you a couple different setups with this. Um, but the best way to run this, I think, is, is the way that we're going to show you how to just glitch out cover three. Now, before we go any further, I actually have... A full offensive guide on the New England Patriots offensive playbook. It actually breaks down formation by formation, play by play, every single thing that you can do from the New England Patriots playbook. So if you want to get my comprehensive offensive guide to New England, you can get that in the description of this video. It's really, really effective. It's really simple at the same time, too. And uh, I think you're going to have a lot of success with it. So if you want to get the guide, it's down in the description. It's a great way to get prepared for Madden 22 because a lot of the concepts that work um, from New England in Madden 21 are going to be a very effective in Madden 22. This is just based on the, what I've played in the beta. The New England Patriots playbook is still really, really good. I think it might be just the best playbook in the game. So if you want to get my complete New England guide, it is in the description. The play we're going over is X Dagger. And um, we're just going to not make any adjustments first. And I just want to show you uh, why this play is so good, specifically against like a cover three Mabel type of defense that you're going to see in Madden 21. So we're just going to snap the ball. And if you watch this triangle receiver, uh, if I pass lead it to the inside, you're going to see that I've got a shot. Now, the biggest thing that I've got to deal with is this corner on the this corner on the um, the cover three side can play that streak. So we're going to talk about how to deal with that in just a minute. Uh, I want to put the ball in the other hash for just a second as well. And I just want to show you this. Um, if we, The way that these uh, plays do differ from hash to hash. So you need to lab on both hashes. So if we run this, this same concept uh, now to this way, you're going to see we're going to get the same exact thing. We're going to have a little bit more of success. But as you can see right there, we still have a little bit of a problem with that uh, cover three corner. And so... The best way that I know on how to deal with this problem of that corner um, being in the way, there's really multiple ways that you can do it, but the one we're gonna show you in this video is a simple slant to the tight end. So all we're gonna do is uh, we're just gonna slant the tight end to the left. And what you're gonna see is this is gonna actually hold the corner pretty well, and we're gonna pass it hard to the inside, and we're just gonna get that one little step on him, and we're gonna be able to bomb the coverage. now. Uh, if you're having any problem with it, you can also pair that one adjustment with a running back option route um, just to kind of make sure that we get this glitch that we want. So we're just going to see here, uh, really simple, pass lead it inside, click on, and you're going to go get it. Now right there, I think I forgot to put the slant out. We'll show it to you one more time. But this is a middle third glitch. Basically what we're getting is we're getting the middle third to bite down. Now there's another way that you can do this um, if you want to. And that's to simply uh, just take the running back. You can put the running back on a wheel route. Um, so if I put the running back on an option route like this, or I could motion the running back to the left and put him on a wheel route. But what you'll see is now it should, with the slant, uh, hold pretty good. Pass it to the inside, click on, and uh, and be able to go make a play. Um, and I might need to move. I might need to move to the other hash. But let me show you the wheel route real quick to the running back. So if I just put the running back on a wheel and motion him across, I should get the same thing. Um, again, most of the time they're going to be really worried and focused on that tight end route. Um, so you see, see how he glitches inside? The wheel route kind of holds him for a split second, and that's kind of what we're looking for. Now, again, typically this has just been my experience that in practice mode they actually defend it a little bit better than they do in the game um, as far as a cover three bomb. So you're going to have a lot of success with this. Another little tip is you can if you motion this guy... Um, 
if you motion this tight end to the right, you're going to see that square is going to come in compressed just a little bit. So that's another little, just a little nuance that you can add to this. Um, it's just going to really keep him compressed. And then you see, you're just waiting for this, um, you're just waiting for this corner on the right side to kind of get out of the way. And typically what's going to happen is he's going to move as soon as a player comes into his grid. So that's why the slant works a little better than the drag. If you redrag the tight end, um, he'll get across the field a little bit faster. And you'll see this. And let me just show this. I'm going to go to instant replay and just talk about this for a second because it's really important. Um, we're talking about this because you have to remember that when people are defending this formation, it's very common that what they're going to do is they're going to uh, basically with their user, they're going to do this. You see how he's kind of sitting in this grid area right in here? Okay, that's what they're going to do. Um, and so when they see something like that, they're going to go here and then they're probably going to come back in on this dig. So I want you just to watch this streak. Uh, watch the corner. You see the corner is looking, 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 looking. And then right there, that right there, this movement is where you want to throw it. What has happened backside? This is where the you see the drag has crossed the nut that that little hash right there. So it's coming into the grid of the outside third, and now you see everybody's gonna to react to this drag or slant. And so it's gonna leave this big grass right in here where I can throw this ball. So it's really important to understand whenever you're labbing your cover three beaters, um, you know, wait, not just not just if you can throw it, but when you can throw it. Because you can you can actually, if you're if you're not careful, you can throw this a little bit too early or a little bit too late, and it can cause a lot of problems. So you'll see right here, if I just wait for that tight end, right there and pass it inside, I've got this nice, easy cover three bomb over the top. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna force them to have to play um, with a deep half on that side. So what they're gonna basically have to do is they're gonna have to start running a, uh, a deep half on their cover three. So you see it looks like that. And so then the problem with that is it is going to be very vulnerable to everything else that we want to do from this formation. Um, the other thing is um, you can now you can just work your high low between Mike Evans and your option route. You don't have to put that back on an option route either uh, to throw this. Let me just show you. It's all about getting that tight end over there faster is really the biggest thing that's going to help this. So if we can get that tight end over a little quicker, one thing we can do with motion to the uh, tight end position. But again, he just gets over there and then right there past lead inside, as you can see. Now, if you have Gunslinger, it's gonna be a lot easier of a throw than if you don't. Uh, Brady doesn't have it, so that's one of the other reasons why we're running into a little bit of a problem uh, where we have and sometimes we have to wait on it a little bit more. But you see there, I don't have to, the cool part about this is you don't have to put the running back out. You can block the running back and still have a very effective concept. As you'll see here, once that tight end gets over there, that's really the key. Pass lead inside, click on, and you see there we're just throwing layups over the top every time. Now, real quick, I want to just speak briefly on cover four. Um, and this is where the running back on an option route and a slant can be helpful. Um, you'll see this triangle route. If we you see that they, you know, they bracket it pretty well, get on the inside of that really nicely. So that's the one thing. Let me let me shift for just a minute over to the other hash because I want to show you this cover three bomb against the left hash. Um, as well and the left hash ones you know running this to the short side it's okay it's not as um, it's not as powerful I don't think but we'll just we'll just show it so again we're just gonna redrag the tight end and snap the ball and what you'll see is we're just waiting 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 you see how he plays it more um, it's because of where he's at on the field it's why it's better to the with, with your tight end on the white or on the short side coming you know, you've got your streak on the wide side now. It gives you a little bit more space to be able to work. So, so anyways, um, this is going to force them to deep half. And then now we're simply just going to leverage the power of this tight end drag in combination with this high low. So you'll see that the yellow zone is going to sit on the R1 route and you can throw this dig route. Um, typically speaking, if they know what they're doing as a defensive user, it's very likely that if they're in something like this, they're going to go user square, okay? They're going to go user square. So now what you've created is this wide open lane to throw the back. You can also throw this little uh, drag and get about three to five yards pretty easily. 
What about man to man? Um, so if they run man to man coverage, like press man, um, you could put the running back on an option route if you're anticipating man to man. If not, it's not a big deal. Um, this square route's really good against man. Like really, really good against man. Typically, if they're gonna play man to man, they're you know you're not gonna call this a lot against man. If you want to make it better against man, put the running back on an option route, and it will be better. You'll see the running back will get open pretty consistently. And then you'll also be able to work your backside route. Um, but I don't really call this against man. I don't really, I, I mainly, again, I mainly call this if they are um, running a lot of cover three. Now, what about like the blitz? This little dig route right here is so good. It's so good against man. So on the cut, all you're going to do if they're blitzing you is on, when he cuts to the inside, you're just going to basically anticipate that. Um, you'll see here I'm going to shade coverage up. The other cool part is that if you ID this outside linebacker, if that linebacker blitzes, the bl the back will stay in. So you'll get extra protection, and then you can still work your in route. Um, and that route's something you just need to trust. You want to wait. Um, you don't want to throw it, like, right immediately on the first cut, I guess. What you want to do is you want to kind of wait for the second. Um, so let me show, let me just show you what that would look like. So again, I'm IDing this guy, shifting my line to the left. It's going to help my protection significantly. But then what you'll see is cut, and then the second cut is where you're throwing the ball. So that's the read. You've got man beaters. You've got zone beaters. The comeback's not bad against man. Uh, no one really ever talks about the comebacks against man. It's a late read. But if they're used right over there on that right side, when he turns his hips to the outside, you see you're going to be able to beat man in coverage. So, anyways, guys, that is X Dagger. This is a really good play against cover three. Um, and if you're enjoying this New England Patriots series, if you haven't gotten my New England Patriots offensive guide yet, I would highly encourage you to get it. It's down in the description. You can get it down below. This is a great offense. It's going to be great in Madden 22 as well. And we don't just talk about the spread. We literally walk you through step-by-step every formation in new england split close ace slot offset u trips bunch trips tight end ace close all of that stuff is broken down in the ebook